Today I am thrilled to unveil the magical secrets of Intense Pencils where colours burst to life on your watercolour paper. Be sure to stay right until the end where I show you some extra tips. So let's dive in. Okay, as always, I've done a trace down of my drawing like this. And don't worry, I provide you with a free outline and a reference photograph to work from. And I'll tell you later on in this video how you can obtain them for free. I'll supply you with a full material breakdown in the description box. But today I'm using these lovely Derwent Inktense pencils and I will let you know why I think they're really good if you're used to watercolour painting but do struggle with it a little bit. These ink tens pencils have been proving very successful on my YouTube channel lately and due to popular demand I've decided to paint a few more. I'm going to be using them in the way that I use watercolour but there are of course many ways that you can use these beautiful pencils and if you stay right until the end of this video I'm going to share with you some extra tips and tips so be sure to stay right until the end. I begin by swatching out my colours on some watercolour paper that you can see on the right hand side of my screen there. I'm just using a um, bit of water just to activate that pigment in the way that I would use watercolour say from a pan paint and I'm just using my number 8 brush here to apply it straight onto the paper. There's a lot of different ways that you can use these ink tense pencils but I like to use them this way because it gives better control. You can see here the colours that I'm picking up. I've got a few colours swatched out here. So I'm just mixing up the yellow colours that you can see. Um, I don't want them to be too colour accurate. We're all about just having fun here on the channel. Um, we're just showing you how to learn to paint as you go. Now notice that I'm using my brush damp here. Once I've applied the ink tense pigment to the paper with my brush, I'm cleaning my brush in the water, patting it on my kitchen paper and then using that damp brush to blend the paint into the paper like this so that I get a lovely graduated wash. You can carry on building up your colours in the way that you do with watercolour, but the reason I really love these is once that pigment is dry, it won't lift off in the way that watercolour does. So if you find that you're struggling with your watercolour and that you find that sometimes that pigment lifts off, then maybe give these a go. They can be bought individually. I think they run at about £2.10, £2.20 each from Jackson's. So they're not super expensive and they last a long time. You can also use them on different surfaces. You don't just have to use them on watercolour paper. You can use them on fabrics and um, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, for today, we're focusing on watercolour paper. You can see that I'm picking up golden yellow and cadmium orange here. And once that first wash is dry, you can see the colour is just bleeding slightly into that petal. I was a little bit impatient, but just carrying on building up that colour straight to the pencil line. It's a watered down version of the pigment and you can see how I'm using my brush to push that into the pencil line like this. Tiny bit of sherbet lemon in the middle and a little bit of spring green and I'm just dropping that in this way. If you haven't got intense pencils, you can of course join in with your watercolour paints without any problems. I don't know what plant this is. Um, I think it's maybe a poppy or an anemone flower, I'm not sure. If you do know what it is, please let me know in the comments below. I should know, but I don't. But let me know in the comments if you do know what this is. Now you can see that I've swatched up the colours on this watercolour pad here. Um, what I will say is once you've activated that paint with your brush, you and it's wet and then it's dried down again, you need to reapply the pencil markings as you can see here. So once you've wet that paint, you need to reapply the, um, the pigment from the pencil. It won't re-wet and that is one of the benefits of using it in place of watercolour because of course it won't lift off. But you do need to add more pigment once you've activated that paint to use, if that makes sense. Okay, so just carrying on with that first wash in place, you can then build up your colours in the way that you would with watercolour. So what you're doing here is you're glazing over the initial wash with another colour, but you can still see that beautiful transparency and vibrancy of the petals underneath. It's something you may want to try if you've struggled with watercolour. The paper that I'm using today is from Etcher. It's in an A4 size pad. 
and it's a cold pressed surface, which means it is slightly textured and takes the paint very, very well. You can, you can use Inktense pencils on any kind of watercolour paper or mixed media paper as well. If you are new to my channel, we launch new content every Tuesday. They are full length tutorials so that you can join in no matter what your level. Usually they're watercolour, sometimes we have a little bit of gouache, but also of course our beloved Inktense pencils. So if this is something that appeals to you, could I ask you please to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell on the side there. That way you won't miss new episodes every time I upload new content every Tuesday. Now at the start of this tutorial I mentioned that we have a line drawing and a reference photograph to accompany this, indeed all of our tutorials here on YouTube, and you can access it in two ways. The easiest way is to watch this video all the way through and I'll put it right at the very end after the outro where you can pause the video and screenshot them that way or you can join our Facebook group where we are an incredible community. Uh, me and my team are working really hard to keep the group um, organized and safe and all that stuff. So do consider joining us there where you can have access to all of the line drawings and references that accompany our tutorials here on YouTube. All you need to do is click the link to join and um, we'd love to see you there. And you can post your works in progress, you can post your finished paintings and have some feedback from my incredible team and our wonderful members and I pop in from time to time to say hello too, so do consider joining us. Carrying on, once that paint is dry, I'm just adding a bit of spring green here, using my finer brush in the details like this. You'll notice that the middle of the plant, I haven't drawn too much detail, I've just done a few pencil lines to guide me where I'm going to apply that colour. You don't need to be too fussy here, I'm just using it as a guide so that I have a rough idea of where I'm going to be dropping that pigment. You can build up the colours of Inktense in the way that you would do with watercolour, so it's the same but slightly better because it won't lift off. At the start of this video you could see the colours that I used and I've listed them in the description box. However, if you want to dive deeper into the art of matching colours and gain access to exclusive tutorials, you might want to consider joining my Patreon where I share in-depth tutorials that are not available on YouTube. They're all botanical, so in case that is something that interests you, let's just take a look. Are you an aspiring artist looking to take your skills to the next level? Or perhaps you're looking for fresh inspiration? Then you may want to consider joining our Patreon. Our Patreon tutorials have much more in-depth instructions and are a much slower pace and depending on the membership level you choose, you can have personalised feedback from me and video calls. Unlike our YouTube tutorials, our Patreon art classes focus on really learning the art of botanical painting and I will guide you step by step through the technique and skills you will need to learn and improve your botanical art. All of our Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So why not join up to our Patreon and start creating botanical art you can be truly proud of. Just carrying on with the process, building up these layers, I've decided to add crimson, which is the colour on the bottom here. I felt that the colours were looking a little bit flat, so by adding the crimson wash, it just felt that it brightened it up a little bit more and gave it that sort of extra splurge of colour. So as I said, if you do struggle with watercolour and you find that it's really frustrating when you keep applying your colours and they keep lifting off or you find that your paintings go muddy, then I would certainly consider giving Inktense pencils a try. Now Inktense do have Inktense blocks, I think they also do little pans. Um, 
I'm not a massive fan of the blocks personally. They are a little bit too thick for me. But again, you know, everybody likes their own thing, right? So maybe this is something else that you'd like to try. I have used the Inktense blocks in a tutorial before and I will put it on the top of your screen now in case you want to check them out for yourselves. Again, they're relatively inexpensive and I do believe that the Inktense blocks can also be bought individually. So you don't even need to splash out on buying a whole set of things if you don't want to. So continuing on here with the process, you can see how I'm glazing over that first wash with another layer, this time using crimson. That's the color that you can see on the bottom there, um, a really nice bright red. But you can see the subtlety that you can achieve with these colors as well as bold overlays. So they are really, really um, very, very versatile paints to use. So like I said, if you haven't tried them, I urge, urge you to do so. Um, they are incredible. But like I always say, use what you have. And if you haven't got these, you can still join in with us and use your watercolour paints. So everything's dry and I have another layer now of spring green here that I'm using with a fine brush. Notice how I'm leaving a little vein in the middle. Um, this will just create this. This is a negative space and it means that it will just make that little leaf look a little bit more realistic. We have that negative spaced vein right in the center there. And just using my brush just to outline and go over that first wash that I've already applied. And the same down the stem here. Just going over this bit here. This time I'm using the, um, this is the Sherbet Lemon. It's a sort of really limey green and I'm using it directly onto the paper. As I said at the start of this video, um, or right towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you some bonus tips on how to use these Inktense pencils. So please stay until the end and that way you can have a look at that as well as of course have access to the um, basic outline that I give you and the reference photograph so that you can trace this down for yourself. I'm using my little brush here to add some detail. This is the crimson red and everything's dry again now so we can start to really pack a punch with these colours and continue building them up. I'm taking the colour, this is crimson and I'm just adding a bit of detail here and there. Notice how I'm mixing the colours up on that little paper palette that I've got there as I go through. You can pick them up individually or you can mix them together in the way that you see me doing here and I'm adding a bit of detail as I work through. Once again, I'm not strictly going to the reference photograph, I'm just kind of using it as my guide. But the important thing is here that you are varying your tones and your tonal values so that this flower doesn't look flat. That's what you're looking for here, really. Remember to clean your brush in between application, pat it dry on that kitchen paper, and of course, then use it to blend the colors through in the way that you would ordinarily do with watercolor. The best thing about these is though, of course, they don't lift off in the way that watercolour does. That's why I love them so much. Just carrying on building them up. You can keep on building until you're happy with the depth of colour that you have. 
Remember to keep applying that pencil to your um, swatch card on the that you can see that I have there on the right hand side because as I said earlier on once that colour has been activated you will need to add more pencil to pick up more pigment. Um, in case you're wondering the paper that I've got my colours swatched out on it's just plain watercolour paper it's a uh, not surface, but any paper will do, any watercolour paper, I guess it would work just as well with. And I know that you can buy these special palettes to scribble out your swatches on, um, but I just use watercolour paper. Picking up that subtle brown and I'm just painting in a little bit of detail here, adding some dots for the stamen and anther, a little bit of that sherbet lemon and dropping it in the middle. Remember, I don't want to put all the details in here. I'm just adding some sort of shapes here and there to give the illusion of the middle of this flower having some shape and some form. I don't want to be too sort of fussy with it. I just want it to be a really cute painting. I'm blending it through with that damp brush. I wanted to add a bit of uh, shading underneath this petal. So I'm mixing Saddle Brown, a tiny bit of crimson there, and I also think there's a bit of Spring Green on that brush, and I'm just outlining that petal to give the illusion of shadow. So if you're a watercolour painter as I am, have you ever tried Inktense pencils before? And if you have, let me know how you got on with them in the comments below. It's always really interesting to see how other people um, sort of adjust to different mediums. It's something I really enjoy using, um, especially when you get a bit sort of in a watercolour rut, I think. Um, I'm fairly new to gouache painting and I have painted a couple of gouache tutorials on this channel and I really really enjoy using it. If you're a watercolorist let me know what you think about using different mediums in the comments below and whether they've worked out well for you. I'm adding a little bit more of the, this is the brown tone that I've used earlier on, this saddle brown here, just to add a little bit of shading here and there and just building up that colour. As I said one of the great things about these is they are very very buildable and so much easier than watercolour if you find that you struggle with that lift off. A bit more crimson being glazed over here. I'm just glazing over with a little bit of that cadmium yellow. Notice how it brightens up the petals. Just adding a bit of detail there on the filaments and picking up some of that darker spring green with a little bit of brown and adding it to the outside edge of the stem. So you can see I've outlined some of the little stamen and anther there. At the start of this video, I mentioned that there's a bonus section in this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to use um, intense pencils to their full potential and their different ways of applying them. So let's just take a look. Okay, as you can see here, I've just swatched out four squares and the first method I'm going to use is just by scribbling that Inktense pencil directly onto the dry paper like this. And I'm also wetting square number two with just some plain water. I'm using my number eight pointed round here just to apply the water and just let that settle into place. I'm going to be doing a graduated wash here. So all I'm doing is using that damp brush and activating that pigment in the way that you would do with watercolour in a pan. So you can see that I'm taking the brush right up to the pencil line, picking up that pigment, taking that pigment sort of midway down that square, cleaning my brush and patting it dry, and then just using it to create this graduated wash. Notice how I'm cleaning my brush every time, patting it on the kitchen paper, and then taking what's left on the brush to the outside edge of that square to create this lovely graduated wash. So that's method number one. The next thing you can do is, this is the damp square, remember, that I've added the water to. Once you apply your pencil directly onto the damp paper, notice the difference in application. 
once that's applied and you use your wet brush, you will not get a wet in wet um, or you cannot, you cannot activate that again. Okay, so if you want that kind of look, you apply it onto wet paper and just let it settle. Look number three is wet in wet in the way that you apply watercolour. So I've applied the water directly onto that little square and I'm taking the pigment from the pencil tip like this to create the sort of look that you would get with watercolour. Notice once again how smooth and even the application method is. And this time we're gonna go wet on dry directly from the pencil so to create a sort of thicker, a more sort of denser wash. And again, right up to that pencil line, and you can see this is another really wonderful way of applying. You can lift it out. This is my eradicator brush and we can create lift outs as well. This is a still sort of slightly damp. And once that paint is completely dry, you can use it, um, another color on the top there, to glaze over your application to make it look really, really um, vibrant and bright like this. So you can layer them in the way that you can with watercolour, but of course, the joy being is that they don't lift off. We've now finished the painting, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to stay right until the end. I'll show you my finished painting in a moment, as well as that reference photograph and, of course, the outline. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.